Right, I'm here with Reese Allen. Uh, Reese Allen is a national Australian judo champion. And me and him are going to be taking us through the top five takedowns for no gi grappling. Um, a lot of these takedowns have been adapted from judo. They're highly effective in grappling uh, because uh, there's an extreme risk whenever you're going for a shot. If you shoot on a double leg or a single leg, uh, whilst it's highly effective, there's obviously the risk of front headlock position. So these five takedowns are five takedowns where you mitigate the risk of a front headlock. So when I square off against my opponent, the first thing I'm looking for is whether or not he's squaring off with that right foot or the left foot forward. For me, I'm a right dominant player. I'm looking for that right foot there. So when we're here, the first thing I'm trying to do is I'm kind of, with my arms, I want to force all of Kala's weight onto that right leg there. So how I'm going to do that is in a strong collar tie, a grip on the tricep, and I'm going to force his weight over there like this. So we're here, I'm going to grab the collar tie, and at the same time, I'm taking that tricep to force all his weight over here to break his balance and have all of that weight on his leg. Um, another option is if I'm quick enough is I can charge forward with my hips and as long as I take that collar tie, I can bump him over to distribute his weight over there. So here, I grip up, one or two, here. Once the weight's all on that leg, it's really easy for me to sweep it up on the outside. So we're here, I step in, bang, down. So I've broken his balance, it's really easy to throw. Here, bang. All right, um, so I'm a left-handed player, um, and often when you're grappling, uh, you can learn all these grappling moves, they work great when you've got right versus right or left versus left. But when you have left-handed versus right-handed or right-handed versus left-handed, it changes the game completely. So I'm gonna take you to, through two throws, uh, which are highly effective when you're versing an opposite-handed player. What this means is that instead of us taking a normal grip, like we're, we're both collar tying on the same side, there's actually a battle, and the battle is to get like a same side collar tie. So in this case, Reese is fighting for the collar tie, I'm fighting for it as well. First battle is obviously that I'm trying to get control of the inside position. If I have outside position and Reese has inside position, he's winning this battle. It's really hard for me to win the battle. So if I, my first goal is one of two things. Okay, as you can see, Reese has got inside position. He also has control of my wrist, which means he's winning the fight. He's got better grips. There's nothing that I can do from here. First thing I do is I can actually shrug my shoulder. And when I shrug my shoulder, you see it opens up his elbow. As the elbow opens up and I pop through, I take control of the inside grip. Reese still has control of my wrist, which means I still can't throw. I don't have two hands on effectively. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to start to come over the top and take control of Reese's wrist. From this position, now that I'm in a strong position, I'm now gonna capitalize and start to break Reese's posture. As I break his posture, I know that Reese is gonna pop up. So he's looking to pop up in that position. As he pops up, all of his weight goes onto his lead leg, and I'm gonna capitalize on that by attacking with a Taitoshi from here. So I have control as I snap him down Reese steps forward. As he pops up, I'm making connection on his armpit. So like just above the armpit here. So I come through, he pops up, I make connection. I'm gonna drive my leg through. As I go to drive my leg through, you'll notice that my leg is bent. So the leg's bent as it comes through. When I finish the throw, I extend my leg to create hop. This flips Reese over much more powerfully. So I'm here like this. I wait for Reese to pop up. As he pops up, I drive through and throw over the top. One more time. I'm here like this. I pull down. As Reese starts to pop up, he's already popping up. My hand's already on his hand. The reason why I have to do this as he's popping up is that I need to keep weight on this lead foot. If I'm late, so he pops up, and now I come and put my hand on, he may have transferred weight off that lead foot. The Taitoshi's then no longer effective. Here like this, Reese comes up. As he pops up, I snap through. Taitoshi. Uh, this time I'm coming in, um, 
And instead of our right on right scenario, this time my partner's coming forward and he's got his left foot in front. So this, this, uh, this situation, the Osoto is a bit, it's a bit far reach. So what I'm looking to do, I'm looking to come in and I'm gonna sweep away this leg here. So how I'm gonna do that? As we square up, I'm looking to reach out, gauge my distance, and I'm coming forward and I'm establishing a collar tie here his arm on his neck. What my forearm is actually doing is I'm creating tension between his neck and his shoulder to really sink his weight onto this back foot here. See how he steps? So as we're here, I've established my grips. What I'm looking to do is I'm looking to force his weight over there in that direction here. And as I do that, I'm forcing him to stumble and that's my opportunity to sweep his leg out and finish my diashi. So here, I gauge distance as I come through. Collar tie, I force the weight, and I sweep. So here, I see his left foot. I post as I come through. Bang. I sweep him down. <laughs> So now we're gonna look at Uchimata. Uh, Uchimata changes, there's so many different ways to do it. Uh, just because I'm showing one way doesn't mean it's gonna be the way that works for you. But this way I find highly effective, especially if you're in a left on right situation. For the most part, I fight left-handed. So the main battle that I have is the collar tie battle. So we're fighting for collar ties. Uh, Reese is right-handed, I'm left-handed. I'm looking for this inside position. I can do an Uchimata from here, but I feel super powerful from the Wizard. Also, because I'm fighting from this position, left on right, Wizard is very available. So what I'm gonna do, number one thing that I'm looking to do is strip this grip and control the grip. Controlling the grip is super important. As a rule, never let the, the hand touch your hip. From here, I'm looking to take my Wizard. As I take my Wizard, it's important that I don't take too deep a Wizard. If my Wizard's super deep like this, it limits my hip movement. It's really difficult for me to come in for an Uchimata. Whereas from a shallower wizard like this, you'll see that my hip movement is so much better and I also have better hand control. This wrist is super important. This is where I create my Kazushi. If the hand stays limp and it stays in this position, as I go to come in for my Uchimata, you can see that Reese's feet and heels are still planted. If I lift this hand up as I go to come in, he comes up, up onto his toes. This is Kazushi and breaking the balance. This control hand is super important. So from here, I'm looking to lift Reese onto his toes. I aim for his far leg, not his close leg. If I miss the far leg, it doesn't matter. I'm still gonna hit the close leg, but I hit much higher on the hips. Remember, Uchimata is supposed to be a hip throw. So I'm here like this. If I want, I can pull down first to create a reaction. Now I lift up. I step through, as I step through, this back leg's coming through, and I'm coming through. Finishing the Uchimata. One more time. I'm here like this. I'm gonna lift up. I lift up. So again, from this right on left situation here, when Cal, like Cal's uh, wizard with his Uchimata, usually a lot of the times anyway, a lot of the players will come and look for body locks. So you come through. And that also gives me a perfect opportunity to establish my wizard position here. Sometimes I like to gable grip on the inside. This time when I go for my Uchimata, what I'm looking for is a reaction. So my partner usually is gonna hop around to escape my Uchimata, and that's when I'm gonna come, I'm gonna counter with a Koujigari. So we're here, Uchimata, he hops. I take his leg and I'm inside. So again, from this wizard position here, I'm gonna link my arms. I'm gonna attack an Uchimata. Bang, my opponent's stepping off. I come inside, I lift the leg, and I'm straight in for a coriander pass. So guys, uh, coming from a judo background, uh, there's a lot that you learn, uh, especially when it comes to judo throws that don't work. So there's throws that are highly successful in judo competitions. It might look really flashy, in jiu-jitsu or no-gi grappling, but they're high risk. Um, a really good example of this is Sienagi or Moroto Sienagi. Um, in the gi, 
there's massive advantages. You have the gear to hold on to, which means that if your partner sprawls on the back of you, uh, you can continue to throw and pull them through. You still risk giving up your back, and that's why I don't suggest this. I can show like the throw will look flashy. Um, so we'll go through and we'll do the throw, and then Reese will show you how easy it is to stop it. Um, so I'm looking to do a Sianagi, drop Sianagi. As I do a Sianagi, I'm leading this hand up. What I'm gonna do is lift up, drop underneath Reese, and stand up and throw. The throw looks really nice, um, but realistically it doesn't work. I'll do the throw one more time fast. We'll turn around, we'll do it this way so you can see it. So I'm here like this, I run through and jump. The throw looks great, but realistically what happens is that when I go in for the throw and I drop down low, Reese can just sprawl on my back. So I come through, he sprawls, and basically oh, I lose this position. <laughs> He's gonna take my back. We'll go through that again, just so you can see. So I'm here like this. So the next throw is another example of a throw that I use in judo that isn't very applicable to nogi. And the reason being is that it's really hard without the grips. So what I like to look for in judo, especially is when someone's got a, a strong overhand on me, I use the sleeve here to pop in and pick my opponent up for a Sode Sirikami Goshi. But uh, obviously without the sleeve, it's, it's really difficult. But uh, I'll show you anyway. So as he's gripping, I come through, I pick him up and I roll him over the back. Let's just talk about why this throw look, like these throws look amazing. Um, and I think it's really easy to get caught up in what looks good as opposed to what works. Um, if Reese actually does this without sleeve control and starts to turn through, he goes to roll through. He gives up his back basically from this position. He can try and hold on, but the second I pull this out, I have control of his back. And Reese is in a horrible situation. Especially when you're sweaty, it's almost impossible to hold on to that hand. I was going to go through a quick defense now for the uh, Mayo Sotagari, which I like to use a lot in competition. So basically, Osotagari is the throw we did at the beginning where I charge in and I force my opponent's weight onto that leg. But now, as you'll see, Cal does it to me and it's quite easy to avoid. All right, so ready? Straight back at him. <laughs> Bro, they're not, they're not answering. Just one minute, please. 